Big shakeup in the Minneapolis Police Department following the shooting death of Justine Damon. Police Chief Janae Hartel resigned on Friday at the request of Mayor Betsy Hodges. The mayor then quickly nominated Assistant Chief Madeira Arandondo to become the new chief. For now, he's the interim chief. The next step is for an executive committee of the city council and mayor to discuss the confirmation. Then there would be a public hearing. The full council will get the final say. Now, Justine Diamond was shot and killed by Minneapolis police officer Mohammed Noor. The 40 year old yoga teacher had just called 911. She reported a possible rape in the alley of her home in the 5100 block of Washburn Avenue South. Officer Noor has drawn criticism for not only his actions, but also his race. He is Somali. Uh, Mary McGuire is in our newsroom to tell us what a Somali Minneapolis city councilman had to say. Mary, he says some people in his community are fearful now. That's right, and that was Council Member Abdi Warsami. He spoke out yesterday in the Cedar Riverside neighborhood. He says it's troubling that the actions of one police officer are being connected to the entire community, adding that race should not be a part of this conversation. That's very dangerous because you're seeing an action of an individual, a member of the police department being given to the whole community. Now, adding to the controversy in his eyes, comments suggesting that Justine Damon was killed because of cultural reasons. Those were made by former Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. He also called out the Minneapolis mayor and the former police chief for their statements last week. I think, you know, they should have held off on that. I think everybody should have been given an opportunity. I mean, we're a nation of laws. And I think without having the facts in front of us, we shouldn't have jumped the gun. Now, the councilman stopped short of saying Mayor Betsy Hodges should, should resign. Instead of focusing on changes to police oversight, he said he supports an independent civilian board that could look at police misconduct and talk about the changes that need to be made before additional police officers are added to the force. Now, Warsami said he has not spoken to Officer Noor and that he has never met him before. He also added that it was unacceptable for those police body cameras to have been turned off. Jason. Mary, as is his right, Officer Noor still hasn't said a word to authorities, right? He has not. He is still uh, pleading the fifth. So far, he's, he has not talked to Minnesota BCA investigators as part of the investigation into Damon's shooting. And at the former police chief, Janae Hartos, her last press conference late last week, he, she told us he hasn't given a statement to police internal affairs either. That's a separate investigation that's happening at the police department. All right. You would expect he would wait until a charging decision is made before he talks to the internal affairs people there. Mary, thank you. Coming up at our next half hour, we'll hear from an Australian reporter who's been covering this story. Just come as the BCA continues to investigate a deadly shooting involving a Minneapolis police officer. The officer killed Justine Damon, who was originally from Australia. Mary McGuire is live in the newsroom with more on the impact being felt nearly 10,000 miles away. Good morning, Mary. Good morning to you, Allie. Well, it's been just more than a week that has passed since the shooting of Justine Damon, and now her name is known worldwide and her story has dominated the headlines. Multiple journalists from Damon's native Australia were rushed to Minneapolis to cover the aftermath and the fallout of that shooting. In Australia, guns are rare and police shootings are almost unheard of. Journalist Alexis Daish and her photojournalists were working in Los Angeles when they heard news of the shooting. The primary reason it's so big at home is that it's, it's, an, it's an Aussie woman um, killed in a foreign country. I think the thing that adds to it though is that the country she's been killed in is a place that's known for, for guns and for police that are perhaps deemed too trigger happy. So I think it's a combination of those two and and you can contrast that with Australia. People very, very rarely get shot by police in Australia. It just doesn't happen. During her time in Minnesota, Alexis says she has seen a level of graciousness, or Minnesota nice as we call it. People here have told her she is welcome here and have encouraged her to keep on digging for answers. Now, it's not just journalists who are covering this story. This shooting was such a big deal, it prompted the Prime Minister of Australia to speak out and demand answers for Justine's family. Allie, they say that most people in Australia who do own guns are actually farmers. Okay, and Mary, we have seen some physical signs around the Twin Cities addressing what happened. Do you have examples? Yeah, check this out. These are some of the orange signs that were posted yesterday afternoon in Minneapolis. They say, warning, Twin Cities police are easily startled. No word yet on who is responsible for putting them up, but the two that I did see posted on social media were posted by the University of Minnesota campus, Allie. All right, Mary, thank you.